Welcome to the next part in this Don and Maui crash course. In this video, we're going to learn all about the single project approach that we have used for Don and Maui. If you didn't come here from a previous video that is part of this crash course, then um, the, let me tell you that this is part of a crash course. Um, so it works best if you follow it from start to finish, but you know, you can follow this video on its own if that's what you want. If you want to learn about the single project approach that we take in Don and Maui, um, then you're more than welcome to, but I will be referencing other videos and skipping over things that I've been talking about in, in previous videos as well. Um, so go check those out. I would highly recommend it that you go through this whole crash course from start to finish. Um, so just just so you know that that is there. So what exactly is this single project thing that you're talking about? Well, the single project is something new for .NET MAUI. If you've been working with Xamarin Forms before, then you probably know that you would have this um, three projects or more, depending on how many platforms you're trying to target. And um, you would have that shared project that would have all your XAML and pages and whatnot. And that's kind of like whatever code you would put in there, that is the code that would be shared, right? So ideally you would want to have your code in there and then you would have an Android project, an iOS project, the UWP project, um, and for the other platforms that you might be supporting. Um, and that those would kind of like be the bootstrapper projects for like the actual apps, right? Because um, like I mentioned in the first video, at the end of the day, Apple and Google are not going to say, hey, send us that XE and we'll make it work. We will need that IPA and that, that AAB file for Android and iOS. So um, those were what those projects were for. And it kind of like makes sense, right? But it's not ideal for us as developers because what happened is that you would have to do all the metadata in your info.plist and android manifest.xml um, you would have to specify your app names your versions and whatnot um, throughout a couple of different projects you would have more importantly you would have all your resources duplicated so if you want to add an image to ios or android um, you would have to put that image in there for all the different re resolutions, all the different form factors out there. So you would have to add that image twice for Android and iOS, assuming that's the only platforms. Um, if you would add Windows, it would be three times. And then for iOS, you would have like three scale factors. So you would have to add it three times in different resolutions. And for Android, it's even more depending on what you want to um, support. So it could be five. So now you're suddenly adding like, I don't know, eight image, 10 images. And it's just this single image that you want to show, right? So that's not ideal and that is things that we have been wanting to solve with the single project approach for .NET MAUI. Well, enough with the theory, let's dive into Visual Studio and let's see how that all fits together. All right, so here we are in Visual Studio. This is just the file new .NET MAUI application that I created in the previous video. Uh, we got our Android emulator set up here. We can run on Windows. Um, the iOS build host has connected. So I see all the iOS simulators here, which is pretty cool. Um, so everything is set up, but I'm not gonna focus on that. I did that for the last video. We're going to focus on the single approach. Now, uh, before you say anything, um, yes, the fonts are pretty much blown up between the last video and this video for Visual Studio. Um, just so it's very clear that where I'm at in the UI and we don't have all that zoom action, you should be able to see it a little bit clearer now. Um, so I hope this helps. Don't worry, your Visual Studio should look just fine. Um, so if we go look at the project, let's open the Solution Explorer here and let's let's take that a little bit bigger. Um, so you can see we just have this single project now and we can select based on the target here, like, hey, I want to run on Android Windows, uh, but we can still do this from this single project. Now this is called multi-targeting, which has been a thing for libraries longer in, in Xamarin Forms, uh, where you have this one project that can target multiple platforms. We've incorporated that now in this app thing as well. But like I already mentioned a couple of times now, we still need like that metadata and that stuff for um, iOS and Android and, and, and Windows and macOS, right? Um, well, we have this platforms folder here and inside of that, we have like all the targets. We also have Tizen in here now, all the targets that you can run on uh, with .NET MAUI. And here, inside of Android, for instance, you still have the resources. If you still need to do that for whatever reason, you can still do that. But Typically, you shouldn't have to. We also have the Android manifest. So if you want to add your, if you somehow the tooling doesn't have um, the uh, permission that you need in the Android manifest, or you have some other property in the Android manifest, you can still add that here. You can open it up. It's just an XML file. You can put it in here just like you would in a native Android application. You can absolutely do that here. Um, we still have a little bit of bootstrapper code here for the main activity, main application, and also you probably need 
need to hook into that if you really want to do something on the platform that we didn't service in .NET MAUI yet. Of course, same for iOS, we have the info P list, uh, the program CS app delegate, we have all these things here. So um, if you still need to write platform code, you can do it inside of the platforms folder. And automatically, if you put it in Android, iOS, Mac Catalyst, um, it will only compile for that platform. So if you want to do something platform specific, this is the place to do it. Then everything outside of the platforms folder is shared. So our app XAML, app shell, main page, Maui program, all shared code. If I add a new class here, that is available on all platforms. If I add a new page, XAML page, that is on all platforms. So that is typically where you want to write all of your code um, so that it's shared automatically across all the platforms here. But you will also notice that the resources are outside of the platform. So this is what I mentioned. We have these resources and we divided them up in a couple of different like categories. Go check out the documentation. I'll put a link in in the video description for kind of like all the types that we have here um, but mostly it's fonts and images um, so the fonts you would typically also have to put that in like each of the um, um, projects but not anymore you can just drop it in here um, and we will figure the rest out for you automatically um, Images, same thing, and it's like highly recommended now that you use SVG. So we have SVG support um, because SVGs can be easily scaled, right? So we need to um, um, generate all these different um, 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 resolutions, all the, these different versions of the images that I just mentioned. Uh, we need to generate those at compile time. So if you have this SVG, we can infinitely scale all the things and get all the different resolutions that we need, put it in the right places for iOS, Android, whatever target you're running, and you should be good to go. Now we also have this raw folder and this is basically you just you know you put in a, a resource here which can be a video, a JSON file, a text file, whatever you want to supply with your application you put it in here and it will be available inside of your application bundle at runtime so you can access that uh, maybe you want to do some configuration there whatever um, just put it in there and it can be used inside of your application. So um, we have all of that. And of course, you can uh, also have this styles.xaml, uh, which is supplied in the templates now as well, which has kind of like a default style for our application. Um, we'll see about that later on, how we can use that and override that. But um, these styles are there to help you style your application. Now, of course, this all shows up nicely in the tooling with Visual Studio and later on Visual Studio for Mac. Um, but all of this has to be saved somewhere, right? So if we go to the project and we click that, or you can, I think, right click and do um, edit project file, uh, we can see the contents of the csproj file, right? So let's inspect what's in there. Um, first off, we have these target frameworks. So this is kind of like all the targets that you can support or that you want to support. So if you don't want to have Android, fine, just take it out here. Um, you cannot use the Android stuff. iOS, Mac Catalyst, same thing. Um, Windows, we have a kind of condition here. Um, because Windows, we can only compile that on an actual Windows machine. And for Python, which is something that maybe not typically all the people want, so you have to enable that manually and you have to set up some extra tooling for that. Um, then there's some stuff, you know, that just has to be there basically. Um, your output type, the root namespace is set up automatically for you. Use MAUI, that's kind of nice to have. Um, single project that indicates that you will actually want to use all this single project uh, stuff because you can definitely take the exam informs approach if that's what you want. In fact, if you are going to use the upgrade assistant, um, then it will upgrade everything to .NET 6 and MAUI and replace namespaces and whatnot, um, but you will not get the single approach, a single project approach out of the box. Um, you will have to do extra work for that on your own, um, except, you know, if you start a file new .NET MAUI application, you will get this single project. Um, implicit usings is a very nice uh, C Sharp 10 feature um, or .NET 6. I'm confused where this lives exactly. Um, um, but you can definitely use that. Go look up what that is exactly. And here we also have like the display name. So we can set the display name once and this will be transported to like your Android manifest and your info P list. So we just set it here once and it will be um, put into the right place whenever we start compiling our application for all the platforms. That is super nice. Same for application ID. This application GUID is, is something that we need. Um, the application display version. This is all stuff that you will need for one platform or the other um, and we can arrange that now in one place actually make, let's make a little sidestep here if I right click on this project here in my solution explorer and I go all the way down um, I have the properties here and um, you will have all these sections here and one of them is Maui shared 
Um, and here you can see the same application titles, right? So application title, application ID in the display version. This is all stuff that you can um, do here as well in a little bit of a nicer interface. Um, and you still also have like all the settings for Android and iOS here as well. So we have that all in one place in a nice editor here. But you know, if you like your text editors, then you can definitely do this in your CS project as well. Um, we have the supported OS platform version. So um, you want to see which platform versions are actually um, 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 supported here. So for each of the platforms, you can specify like, hey, it has to have at, at least iOS 14.2 or Android uh, 21 and et cetera, et cetera. Now, this is where it gets interesting. We have this item group right here, uh, which kind of like has the references to um, things that we've just seen. So inside of our resources, there was also the app icon. I skipped over that and the app icon FG, um, which are both SVGs, but this is set as a MAUI icon. So if we go back here to our solution explorer and I right click this app icon, and again, we go to properties, we will get the property screen. And you can see here, this build action is set to MAUI icon. And we got a couple of more, of course, all the Android ones, um, a Maui asset. So we have a couple of Maui ones here. Um, and, you know, with these build actions, what you can do is um, you can specify at build time what is going to happen with that. So we build in a couple of things like the Maui icon, uh, with which we can say include app icon SVG and a foreground file. Um, and now these two files will be combined together. Um, and that will make for your app icon, the one that you're going to find on your home screen of your device for iOS, for Android. Uh, it's going to be the icon for Windows, all the platforms, we're going to generate that icon for you. You just have to set like this SVG um, and the background color and we will generate it for you. Of course, if you want to do more something fancy, um, just do it yourself. Um, you can totally do that as well, but we are making it easy by letting you specify this Maui icon. Now this foreground file, uh, you should check out the docs, um, but this is something very specific to Android, which has a foreground and a background file. Um, which you can use, um, so specific to Android, but you know, generally, if you just set um, the include one and the color, we can generate a um, icon for you. Now, the same thing with the splash screen. So the splash screen for a lot of people is just a static screen um, with a, a maybe an icon centered in the middle. Um, so just to get you started with this, we are going to say, hey, we have this Maui splash screen. Again, provided with this SVG, um, do a color, a, a background color. Um, you can also set something for like the base size. Again, check the documentation in the links below um, what it all means exactly, uh, with which you can say like, hey, this has to be the size like on screen and that gives us a little hint on how to generate um, your your images um, but we will center that image that you supply here on the screen uh, give it a nice background color and boom you have a splash screen out of the box don't even need to worry about that anymore as well here are the maui images we need the maui image build action for each of these um, so that we know um, how to generate which images to generate um, so you can use wildcards for this so everything inside of the resources images wildcard is is going to be treated as a Maui image. Um, and we want to have the specific one, the .NET Maui bot, uh, well, the .NET bot, it's not specific to Maui, uh, where we can specifically set this base size again. Um, so you can, you know, um, get a couple of out there where you need to tweak the settings a little bit and you can mention them specifically. For the Maui font, same thing, we need to do a little bit of work on that to put them in the right place, register them somewhere inside of your uh, metadata for, for iOS, for instance. So you will need to register that as a font, but typically, you don't need to worry about it just drop it into the resources fonts um, folder and you should be good to go and here for the maui assets kind of like the same thing um, just drop it in there and we will do the magic for you so that's where that all lives now the next thing i want to point out is the Maui program. So the Maui program with .NET Maui, um, we have kind of like adopted the .NET generic host and the .NET generic host builder. So if you're coming from another part of the .NET ecosystem, um, like ASP.NET Core has this and, and some other projects as well, um, you will know how to work with this. You will recognize this and go like, hey, I know how this works. So we have this builder object um, and we are going to say use Maui app. That's kind of like something you need to have. Configure fonts. Um, we can also say like, like, hey, serve, uh, sorry, builder dot services dot um, add singleton. 
or transient or whatnot. So dependency injection is now built in as well. Um, you can just register it all here. Um, what else do we have? I think we have things for logging. So we can hook up some logging here. Um, I think we can um, do the Blazor web view if that's what you want to do. Um, add, is it add? I don't know. You have all the options and it's all set up like um, with, with these extension methods, right? So you can just hook into the builder here and you will know this pattern and you will know how to look. Um, I already also seen the uh, third party libraries that are hooking into this. So if you're installing the .NET MAUI Community Toolkit, we have this initialization line, .use MAUI Community Toolkit, and boom, it's initialized and it's good to go. So, um, you know, as it is, cross-platform development is hard um, and it, it, this is just one less thing to worry about. So you know how to work with this if you're coming from another project type and um, this should worry you a little bit less. So there's that. Um, then kind of like the last thing I want to point out here is Shell, uh, which is not has nothing to do really with like the single project approach, but um, the templates are working with Shell and Shell is kind of like your opinionated way on how things are going to look and feel um, you can use the things uh, from that like the fly out menu that will be set up automatically top tabs bottom tabs um, and it will give you all kinds of things to do url type navigation um, so this app shell is right here with the shell content that's set up for the main page. Um, I just want to tell you it's here. Um, we're going to see that in, in a video later on. So again, make sure to stick around so you'll know. Then we'll talk about navigation and um, how this all kind of like fits together. Um, and we have the app.xaml and the app.xamlcs. So again, this is kind of like the entry point of our application in, in the .NET world at least. Uh, and here we're going to set the main page to this app shell and then our application is going to run and is going to show the main page that we have seen before um, for running the application. So that's in a nutshell what the single project does and how that all works together. If you're seeing .NET Maui for the first time, then you're going to love this. You're going to love the simplicity, how this works and how much work is being taken out of your hands. Um, but you will never realize uh, if you're coming from examining forms, um, how much pain we had before. Um, because you know, like I said, we had a couple of different projects. We had to repeat these steps over and over again. So if you're coming from examining forms, then you're going to be even more happy happy with this because this is a big productivity boost. You have to do so much less stuff with your images and, and your fonts and um, de duplicating all that effort. No more of that. We're going to use this single project approach and it's going to be amazing. Now you know how it all fits together, what a single project is, why it is important, and more importantly, why it is useful and you have to do less and less work. Who doesn't like that? Um, so for the next video, we're finally going to make steps towards building that actual application and uh, building your first .NET MAUI application. We're going to start with displaying data. So be sure to hop over to the next video. But actually, let me help you. Here is the actual next video in this course. So go check out that. Maybe click the like button first. Check out if you're subscribed yet. And if you want to check out the full playlist of this course, what is coming next, go check out here. See you on the other side.